Whether you just started printing yesterday or you've been printing for years, I'm going to show you eight 3D printing tips and tricks. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Wondered why your prints do this sometimes? Gosh, they all come out, and then at the very end, you realize that one side is all lifted up? Or your prints don't stick together? They come apart in layers? You can't figure it out? Well, my friend, you may just need to clean your print bed. If you have a glass print bed, which many 3D printers do, it may need a good cleaning. I use PVA as a glue on my glass print bed, but after a while, that PVA builds up and needs to be removed and then reapplied. And you can see here, after many, many layers, it's built up. But the good news is, PVA is water soluble, so we're gonna remove that polyvinyl alcohol from the glass print bed. While you're at it, you might as well clean the heating element with a little bit of denatured alcohol so that you can maximize your thermal heat transfer between the heating element and the glass print bed. Now it's time to put some new adhesive back onto the clean glass print bed so we can get some fantastic prints. I like using this purple kids glue and the beautiful thing about it is that it's purple when it goes on and it dries clear so that way you know where your glue is applied and you can see when it's dry and you're ready to go knock out some fantastic prints sometimes the prints stick to your print bed a little too good and they're just a little bit too delicate to be removed by just peeling them off manually. So what I use is a decorating knife. I even sharpen it at the point a little bit so I can get right underneath that skirt, pop that part right off the print bed. Works great every single time. Often, to get your print to print exactly the way you want, you need to print with supports. Removing those supports can be difficult sometimes. I like having a micro chisel for those fine little details. This is basically a miniaturized chisel. It's a dental tool. You can buy these at a dental supply place or maybe even get your dentist to give you a broken one next time you visit. The tool is fantastic since you basically cut in a downward direction which is totally different than cutting with like a craft or a hobby blade. This allows you to remove little details like this little built-in support much, much easier. I don't really like sanding my 3D prints. I much prefer to use a scraper like this square card scraper because basically I'm just removing little supports or little overhangs. I don't really need to get all that dust into the air. I have dozens of these scrapers from when I used to be a clay modeler. They are basically spring steel. So it's a treated, hardened steel that is flexible, holds an edge fantastic, and allows you to basically remove just little tiny bits of 3D printed material. They work fantastic. This square cod scraper is used by woodworkers and you can buy that at just about any good woodworking store. This is a curved one that was originally used for clay modeling, but works great for little curved and domed surfaces. You can really see how the scraper just allows you to scrape in just very specific little areas. Something that you basically can't do with sandpaper. And it allows you to keep that gloss and shine and finish on your part and just get into those little areas that need to have a little bit of material removed. Hey, hope you're enjoying the video about the 3D printing tips and tricks and you find some useful information that's going to help you 
with your 3D printing. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell so you get the parentheses around it and you'll get notifications of my weekly videos that I upload. How do you store your spools of extra 3D printing material? Do you leave them out in the open? I store them inside of a sealed box. This box is less than $15 at one of your local home stores and it holds several spools of 3D printed material. I also put some desiccant in the bottom. You can buy these packets or you can use a refillable one that you can reuse over and over. But you want to keep your filament clean and dry. This is my bonus tip. Build yourself a rolling cart or a stand for your 3D printer. It'll allow you to move it around your shop, put it anywhere you need it. Very handy, super versatile. Many 3D printers put the spool of material on the back or on the side, but they neglect to figure out what to do with that stupid brick. That power brick. I've removed the spool from the back of my printer and mounted my power brick where the spool normally goes. This way I don't ever have to worry about dragging it around or having it get broken or damaged or being in the way. You say, Eric, what am I gonna do with my spools of material? They have their own box, of course. This is a multi-spool box holder. And in here, in this sealed container, I've 3D printed some hangers that connect to a piece of inch and a half PVC to keep my three most recent spools of material handy and ready to use at a moment's notice so I can swap them out as needed. And inside of here is a reusable tin of desiccant. And I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. When they start to turn green and they're no longer fully orange, and you can see a few of them here are green, they've absorbed moisture inside the box and they're keeping my filament dry. You can pop this desiccant back into the oven for two, three hours, dry them out and turn the pellets orange to have them continue to reabsorb moisture. You can also, of course, use these store-bought packets of silica gel. So, super easy to change out the filaments inside of this box. There's the inch and a half piece of PVC tube and the 3D printed holders that I printed on the sides. And I have even sealed them into the box with a little bit of silicone and a plate on the outside and four nuts and bolts so I can easily remove and change out any of my filaments into my printer. Very handy and it stores right below the 3D printer itself and allows me to quickly and easily change that filament and slide it into the Bowden tube in the back of my 3D printer with whatever filament is next on my print job. If I have too many spools of filament, I have some shelves on the side of my 3D printer cart where I can store them in gallon plastic bags. My number one 3D printing tip is get yourself an uninterruptible power supply. This is always plugged into your 3D printer so that when the power goes out even for a millisecond, your 3D printer doesn't lose power. This is essential if you're printing a 12 hour, a 24 or a 36 hour print and the power goes out so that your print is not ruined. This is how you make money. When the power goes out, it shows you the time remaining on the battery of the power supply, how much power is left and that you're on battery power. If you liked the video and you found it useful, leave a thumbs up. 
And please leave a comment below with some of your favorite 3D printing tips and tricks. Hey, and don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook sometimes, Twitter usually, and now Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.